What's up, BLS? Thanks for watching this service. We hope this encourages you. Stay tuned for more. Every week, we get to come, hang out, and play some games. Since we can't meet physically right now, we figured we'd get you to play some games in your own home. Check this out. Baby blocking. Wooden blocks have been used since the 17th century to teach children their alphabet. In this challenge, the contestant must master the ABCs of perfect balance by stacking five blocks on a plate resting atop their head. If the stack of small cubes is not perfectly aligned, it could spell trouble. Failure to complete this task in 60 seconds may result in elimination. One. much for continuing to stay tuned. Uh, I'll try to make this as short as possible, but tonight we're continuing with our Grow series, and we will be talking about worship tonight. So the past couple of weeks, we've done our Bible, why it's important to read our Bible. Uh, last week, we talked about prayer and fasting and how those things go together and why those are important in a spiritual discipline in our life to help us grow. And then tonight, we'll talk about worship. Next week, we'll talk about our testimony, and that'll wrap up this month, and then the 31st will be something special. So we'll just jump right into it. That's cool, all right? So we're talking about worship tonight. What is worship, all right? I'm going to define it really fast. There's a lot of different definitions uh, out there. There's a lot of, some people will take different things, but here, here's mine. Here's, for the purpose of this message, for how I live my life, this is exactly what it is. An outward expression of an inner commitment. All right. Worship is an outward expression of an inner commitment. OK, so when I think of worship, worship is is where you get strength from and you give strength to. OK, so, for instance, um, uh, the outer outer expression for inner commitment go, kind of goes like this. Uh, I have an inner commitment towards my wife. And so therefore people wear wedding rings or I got tattooed for that reason. So that makes sense. Inner commitment, outward expression. How we worship Jesus uh, on the outside is only because of what he's done on the inside of us, all right? And so there's three ways to do that. I feel like, just kind of narrowing it down, there's three ways. In our time and money, in our in a worship service, kind of like on Sundays, so there's Sunday morning, Sunday nights, our small groups, something like that, and in life, all right? So first we're going to hit time and money, time and money. Uh, now I have a question. Do you invest your time? Do you spend your time or do you waste your time? 
Now, a couple of months ago, actually probably over a year ago now, I did a, a sermon in uh, in Big Church, and uh, and it was titled "Don't Waste My Time." And basically, what I was talking about was our time. If currency, uh, if currency was time, then how would you spend it? What would you do with the time that you had? And so that's just like this: we can invest our time, we can spend our time, we can waste our time. Man, I can't remember how many times my dad's like, "Don't waste my time." Or I can tell you, uh, hey, don't waste your time on that. Or like, hey, why don't you spend your time doing something else? Um, but I never thought about it investing our time in a way uh, like like I have recently, right? So um, same with money, right? We can invest our money, we can spend our money, or we can waste our money. Uh, there's a lot of people, um, if this is you, don't get offended. But like, I can't see dumping a bunch of money into my car. The reason why... I've been in four accidents and none of them have been my fault and cars can be gone like that, right? You can spend a bunch of money in cars and trucks and do a bunch of stuff to them and they de depreciate in value really fast and they're, they can be gone like that. I'd rather spend my money in my house, um, spend my money on my family, investing my money to, for my 401k or for, to an, a Roth IRA or something like that, preparing for the future. I'd rather spend my time and invest my time into my kids and to my wife so that we would have a great relationship when they get older. So the, the Bible very clearly depicts and teaches us why it's important for us to invest rather than waste. In Matthew 25, 14 through 30, right? I'm not going to read it, but basically Jesus teaches the parable again, right? Because that's what he did. A parable is a short story that has a moral to it, kind of like a fable, right? So um, he teaches of these three guys, and they each are given talents, right? One talent and uh, five talent, ten talent. And he gives them these things, and he's like, all right, bro, go do what you will with them. I'll be back. So the one dude that's got, you know, ten talents, he comes back, and he's like, hey. Um, he takes it, invests it, multiplies it. What's up? That's awesome. Next guy goes out, takes his talents, goes out, invests it, multiplies it. That's what's up. Third guy only got one talent. He comes in and he's like, all right, dude, this guy's crazy, so I'm going to bury it. So he buries his one talent, right? So the guy comes back, the master comes back, and he's like, all right, boys, what y'all doing with my money? What you do with my, uh, my, my talents? And so one guy comes out and he's like, uh, hey, I – was given a bunch. And so I took it. I know you're a hard man and I want to do this thing. And so I multiplied it. He is like, awesome. Good job. Good and faithful servant. What's up? High five. Here's some more for your diligence. Right. Then goes back into uh, the second guy. And the second guy's like, dude, I know you're a hard guy. So I went out, I multiplied it for you. I invested it. And here's the returns. Um, here's what I got. Master's like, go. Awesome. Here's, here's a cut of it. High five. Good job. Good and faithful servant. Then turns around. The dude that only had one talent comes up. He's like, bro, I knew you were a hard man and I know you're kind of scary. And so like, I did not want to, uh, you know, get in this place with you. So I just buried it. All right. I buried it. And I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it alone until he comes back. And, and here it is. Here it is. I gave you that one thing. And the master's like, are you a fool? Like, what is your deal? You knew I was a hard man. You knew that I reap where I didn't sow. Like, get out of here. And it, and it doesn't turn out good for that guy. So God is just basically teaching us the stuff that he's given us, the time and the money that he's given us, the talents even, if you play guitar, if you play whatever, all these time, the, the time, talents, and thoughts, mind, money, and minutes, the stuff that we do have, he wants us to invest it. Turn it to more. So what are you spending your time on? What are you spending your time on or wasting your time on when you should probably invest it? Maybe it's your cell phone, right? You can't put your daggum cell phone down. My wife, I'll be honest, during the quarantine stuff, it's been, it's been kind of crazy for me too, but it's hard to put our phone down. Maybe it's a boyfriend or girlfriend. Maybe it's Facebook, Instagram. Maybe it's TikTok. Maybe it's Reddit. I mean, I don't know. For, I don't know what that is for you. <clears throat> Maybe it's the computer. Maybe you have computer games. Maybe you have your Xbox or your, your PS4, something you got to put down. See, we have to find things that are eternal, eternal worth. 
human beings our eternal worth and pour our lives into those things, all right? We have to give the missions. We have to spread the good news. We have to we have to give our time to the people uh, with no with no one, right? The widows and the orphans. Jesus tells us about t- taking care of them. We have to be the people that God's called us to be, the people that Jesus wants us to be. So our time and our money is one way of worship. Number two is in service, right? Uh, it's it's in a worship service. It's in a collective. It's in a group of people. So we can lift our hands, we can jump around, we can sing, we can shout, we can sit there quietly on the front row praying and being just as much as worship as everyone else. But remember, <clears throat> worship is an outward expression of an inner commitment. If I just told my wife, I love you one time a year, and that was on her birthday, do you think that she would think I love her? I've got to continuously pour out my love on my wife. Baby, I love you. Let me do the dishes for you. Let me take the trash out. Let me go run errands. Let me go this. Let me do this. Let me give you a hug. Let me do this and this. Because it's an outward expression of that inner commitment that I have towards her. It's the same way with the Lord. We have to continue to uh, to give out of ourself. It's the overflow from our heart is what worship is. So to be being together and joining in worship encourages one another. The reason why you come on Sundays, the reason why you come on Sunday mornings, the reason why we go to our small groups is not because it's another thing to do, because Lord knows I've got enough stuff to do during the week, but it's so that I can be with people who are like-minded, that I get to worship God together in one mindset. In Hebrews 10.25, it says, "Not, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing but encouraging one another. That's what it's there for. That's why we come to church. That's why we come to ELC or ELS. That's why we are here is to encourage one another. And and what's awesome about that is he follows it up in Matthew 18, 20. He says, for, for where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. And so what he was saying was, yeah, I can meet you by yourself. Absolutely. When you're by yourself at your house and you're taking those lonely times, you're turning into a lone time, he's like, I'm there. But he makes sure he points out, but when two or three or more are gathered, when they're coming together, when you guys are hanging out and you're coming there because of me, I'm going to show up. Just remember that. I'm going to show up and I'm going to show out. The reason why we come on, on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights is to be together so that God will show up and we get to pour our love on him and he puts inside us something that we can't get for ourselves. So number one is our time and money. That's how we worship God. Number two is in a worship service, in a gathering. And number three is in our life. I feel like it's the most important one. I love getting together. I love getting uh, to worship together. I like being able to give my tithes and offering and giving to missions and all that kind of good stuff. I like giving my time to people who need it. But I think more importantly, God wants our life. In Romans 12, 1, it says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. This is your spiritual act of worship. See, Paul here is asking you to live in a way that worships the Lord. If 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 I say that I love my wife and I don't live that way, I continue to flirt with every girl that comes by. I don't give her any attention. I never hang out with her. I never buy her any gifts. I never speak good things about her. Would you say that I loved her? No. The best way to the best way to worship somebody, the best way to pour your love on somebody is to act like it. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a very real, honest, very hard question. If somebody was to go through your phone and your text messages, go through your phone and your your Instagram history, or maybe even in your your uh, your Safari history, or maybe if. I had to put a a camera in your car or if I had to put a camera in your room or in your house and I followed you for a solid week and I didn't have any audio, 
would I know that you were a Christian? Would I know that you worship Jesus? Would I know that you were a follower of the Most High? Let me be honest with you. Not every day in my life are you going to be like, that dude loves Jesus, but I try. I try my hardest. There's going to be times where I miss it with my kids. I miss it with my wife. I miss it with, I miss it with Pastor Matt. I miss it with everybody. But at the end of the day, I want somebody to be like, dude, 85%, 90% of his life is dedicated to the Lord. The other 10% we can work on. I want to know is if your life is reflecting who Jesus is, or is your life bringing worship to God? Again, in Romans 12, 1, it says, Paul writes this, therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. See, we can do a lot of physical things. We can lift our hands, we can lift our voices, we can come and be a part of a group. We can give our money. We can even give our time. Those are physical things. But Paul says your life being lived out is the spiritual act of worship. Wow. See, we should be people who live our lives in a way that people know that we serve God. When we go to the grocery store and we're frustrated, when I'm on, dear Jesus is my fault. I know I'm working on it. But when I'm, in, when I'm on Business 98 or I'm on 98 and people are doing 35 miles an hour and cars are like this and you can't get through, like it drives me crazy. But in every aspect, we have got to reflect who Jesus is. Our life should bring worship to the Lord. Let me just say this about young people, right? Us. We, there's a lot of people who go, man, they, they don't know what it's like to serve the Lord. They don't know what it's like to, to wait. They don't know what it's like. They don't have... The, cap the capacity or the ability to worship God like I do. But let me just tell you something. In 1 Timothy 4.12, it says, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young, but set an example for believers in speech and life, in love, in faith, and in purity. If we can set those things right now in our teenage, our teenage years even, if we can set those things up, let me let me just give you a little, little thing. I, I'm, I'm closing, I'm, I'm almost done, I promise. Your teenage years are seven years of your life, right? And um, the average lifespan right now is around 70 years. So your tithe of your life, if you were just to live for Jesus in those seven years, your teenage years, you would tithe your life. Think about that. Your 10% of your life could be dedicated to the Lord. And they say this, statistics say once they serve the Lord for more than five years, people usually tend to continue their faith on after high school. But diligently seeking God and being who God wants you to be within those five years is difficult. But then it gets easier after the two. And then when you're gone, it's easier to look back at those times. So I encourage you, I encourage you, to live a life that way. Paul writes to Timothy, don't let anyone look down because you're young, but set an example for believers in your speech. Come on, somebody. In the life, in your love, in faith, and in purity. So worship is so close to my heart. That, that Actually, this whole series is so close to my heart because this is how we grow. But how we worship is number one, in our time and our money. Number two, in a worship service, in groups and gatherings, of like-minded people, and number three, in our life. I'm done. I, I'm going to pray for us real fast, and then uh, and then we will just move on, okay? God, we love you. We thank you so much for this series. God, I thank you that we are growing. We are getting closer to you by reading our Bible, prayer, and fasting. God, tonight we're talking about worship, and then next week we will talk about our testimony being the thing that sets people free. And so, God, we love you for that. We thank you. God, help us about this week to, to truly hone in and worship who you are, God. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, man, I, I love you guys. Thank you so much for sticking sticking around, hanging out with me. And um, I'm excited about uh, this next couple of weeks. And uh, you will be hearing from me real soon about some, uh, some exciting news uh, as far as ELS and um, ELC and all that kind of good stuff coming up. 
So um, I, I love you. We will talk to you real soon.